Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geeks of the Round. I am your executive producer, Deanna Jackson. We are very excited to be here right now, now that Dexter's finally over, to talk about the penultimate episode ever of Breaking Bad, episode 515, Granite Slate. Uh, the, the, a truly incredible episode. Uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce the rest of the panel so we can get into this, because I'm sure we all have a lot to say. Joining us, Isaiah Mullins. What's going on, man? I'm great, and I love this episode. <laughs> Well, that was fantastic. Johan, what up? Hey, how's it going? Oh my god, this this episode made me orgasm. <laughs> we still got one left. Wow. Knuckles, what it do? Love the episode. A little bittersweet to know that next week is just the last where it ends. <sighs> Tell me about it. And last and most certainly not least, tears. I'm already Todd. in tears. It made Johan cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let, let, let's just jump into this thing. Uh, last episode, we saw Walt uh, deciding to disappear. It's like he did the best he could uh, with what he had for his family to make sure they wouldn't be in, to try to make sure that they wouldn't be in too much trouble by kind of making sure the police understood that Skyler was sort of an innocent victim of everything. Uh, Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, but that is what he was attempting to do last week. And this week, and in addition to some of the things, we do see the fallout of that. But first off, we see that Walt is not the only person that decided he needed to disappear. Uh, looks like our, our, our favorite lawyer is uh, pulling a little bit of a vanishing act himself. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no choice, really. Yeah, it's like uh, too many people knew he w knew his name. He was definitely in too deep. Yeah, it, it was time for him to go. It's like uh, he's, he's he, <laughs> it's not gonna be too fond of it, but what it is, what I, it is. I Can guess I you could say I guess you could say it wasn't Saul Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that's so cool. That was such a terrible part. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it was terrible, but I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of Ponsville and the name, uh, when he was when he was getting his ID, I was wondering uh, if they were going to give him another punny name, um, but I don't think they did. I think they just gave him a regular name when they didn't say it, right? I uh, know it's like he he did say his new name in the episode, but it wasn't anything memorable. It was it wasn't right, yeah. Yeah, because I remember he he was uh during the conversation he had with with Walt, where Walt was like, oh oh, oh yeah, it's like change of plans. He's coming with me, and so it's like, um, here's the thing. No, the fuck I'm not. <laughs> right. He's like, no man, I'm gonna, you're in too deep. I'm gonna go this way, you go that way. I think I'll follow you. I'm good. <laughs> I honestly think that's the last we, what we're going to see of him. I mean, you know, besides the prequel. But in this yes. series, I think that's it. Obviously. Yeah. I don't see any point of him. But... That's the last Saul Goodman, I think. Yeah. Yeah, sadly. He's Saul gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. Uh, wow. All right. Uh, that was worth the rebuttal. All right. All right. With that. God. But in this episode, we we saw Walt very much at, at, at the end of his rope. It's like he, he he wants that money back for his family, so it's like he's desperate to to try to find some hitmen or something like that to to go after Jack and his crew because he wants that money back so he so he can give it to his family. It's like I mean, because as bad as as Walt has gotten everything he's done, for the most part, has been for his family. And, 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 yeah. that, and that, at least at the beginning part of this episode, is, is still a driving force for him. Mm. Well, of course. I mean, you know, I got his family. Yeah, I think his motivation or a bigger driving force is revenge now, too, as well. I mean, I think that's a key factor in his motivation. Oh, Actually, yeah. not just revenge, but, well, you said going into the episode, so that would be... Yeah, jumping. going into it. Later going on, into it, too. but even going in, I think it's revenge later on, Greek. Or whatever. No, we'll yeah. talk about that later. Not... Yeah, we'll talk about that later. It's better. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, af after, uh, if it looks like J Jack and his crew decided to pay a pay a visit to uh to to good old Hank's house and recover a few items of interest, least of all, or not least of all, I suppose, would be Jesse's entire confession tape, the the, the tape that he made with a. Uh, 
Hank. with uh, Hank. Hank and his partner. I was trying to remember his partner's name. It's not coming to me. Right Gomez. Now. Gomez. Yeah, Gomez. Yeah. Tell me. That's something. It. Gomez. I think it was. Who cares? He's yeah. dead. Yeah. But that exactly. tape is like they seem to have a very entertaining time checking out that tape until <laughs> no. they discovered that he actually he he very clearly ratted on Todd and Badly. Jack didn't take too kindly to that. Mm-hmm. Nope, not at he's all. About, he's about to kill him too. <laughs> Jack doesn't lie. He doesn't play that. Jack don't play that. Mm-mm. But but since Todd has a you know a chubby for Lydia, you know he's like no no don't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we need we need we need Smith so that you know I, Lydia will oh. still be around and I can you know maybe. Hit yeah. That. Also speaking about Todd, he did an amazing job playing that. I'm a sweet guy, but he's also a really cold blooded person, just like his uncle. <laughs> He's really... the main villain, honestly. I, I I think this this season he is the main villain of, of of everything because he controls Uncle Jack. I mean, in the end of the day, you, you see how it works. He just plays that innocent, you know, nephew role and yeah, proud he's really, uncle. He's really good at that though too. He's good at playing both roles, good and bad. Well, quote unquote good, but yeah, he's really good at that. He's yeah. a really polite psychopath. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yes, exceedingly yes, so. <laughs> now politeness Jack is all—it's our... all an act. Which, man, think of how brilliant Breaking Bad is by making Todd, like out of nowhere, this small little speck of a character becomes the Gus Fring of the end of it all. You know, he becomes yeah. a driving force. I, I, yeah. I, I think you're going a little bit far by saying he's the Gus Fring. Yeah, of we can't say he's Gus because he can't that, go that, all that, 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 He's the catalyst. Exactly, yeah. he's the catalyst for most of what's going to happen. Right, but we can't he's say he's the catalyst, like but definitely, but not the head. Of I mean, Walt's his own victim, villain, because he's the one who called Todd in the first place. But right, he made, his own, he made a deal with the devil, really, if you say it like that. For these final episodes, that he's 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 you know, shining. He's the scary one. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely the scary one. It's like because he he's just. So damn cold blooded. It's like it, yeah, we, we've we've seen him do things just without remorse, without hesitation. Yeah. It's like I mean, we we knew that as soon as he as he dropped that uh as he killed that kid back when they did the train heist. That got me like no. But that one scene he did was like to really mess up Jesse was like wow, that just mm. wow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like and we saw a little bit more of his politeness when. That they ended up breaking into Walt's house and threatening Skylar to make sure that she didn't say anything about Lydia, and, right. and, th- and that that scene, oh man, that was like, that was downright eerie, because Todd was just so calm and and Clip yeah, just just completely polite, uh, e- even though it's like I mean, very clearly he would kill her, and his son and her daughter. <laughs> If anything were to go sideways here, right? He said he didn't care. Like, well, it's for interest, and I don't care about you. Since I respect your husband, this won't happen. But you know, I will come back and get you. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's like I I really have to give props to him. It's like a, that that that's a <laughs> that's a hell of a role he's playing. Right. Uh, right. He, I, I, I think oh he's yeah. Doing a great job with it. Absolutely. Also, also when they were watching the scene during Jesse's confessional, just like the smile that he had, like he was hiding the shit-eating grin the whole time. <laughs> yeah, he was proud of himself. Yeah. Because yeah, like, oh yeah, I did do that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that makes him a villain. He's proud of his crimes. Yeah. I mean, they're all villains, but yeah, there's no yeah. good guys. Well, no. one one dies a good guy, but that's a different story. Yeah. And also past that is like we have uh, Jesse is very much trying to get get himself out of the situation. Right. And it, 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 it's a damn shame. It's like I mean, because because as crazy as Todd is, like I mean, at least he was being kind of cool. You know, it's like here, have some ice cream. And, oh, you want this cover off? Okay. Yeah. No problem. And, yeah. And and, yeah. and, and Jesse. Does what he has to do is like he, he used the paper clip that was attached to the to the to the picture that they gave him Andrea and, and, and Brock, and hey he did a good job picking picking those locks and getting out of there. But 
unfortunately for him and more unfortunately for Andrea, yep. uh, they caught him in the act, and that's that's the point when we figured, when Jesse figured out that that threat there was no veiled threat there about that picture yeah. being there. That was a very direct threat, and that threat yeah. came into fruition right before his eyes, and he, it, also that was a hell of a scene. Yeah. So, yeah. You can see Jesse in the truck just banging his head up against, up against the window, try, trying torture. desperately to do anything to stop this. Right, it was just torture. Just... And, and I think that scene really proved how greedy Jack and all of them really are, because previously he said... You know, Jack even said, "Why do we? What do we care about meth? We just won the freaking lottery. You know, they just stole all that money from Walt. You know, what? What do they? You know, but yet they still went through with this. Yeah, thanks you know? to Todd. Well, well no, yeah, Todd, we... Todd was the driving force to do all of this. But yeah, exactly. This is how selfish Todd is because he wants Lydia so badly, and he, you know. Yeah, hey, he did. He got that with that 92 percent. Like, she, hey, oh wait, ninety two percent. Hey, you about to drop Speak... your pants, man. Let me say something real quick. Speaking of 92%, but I just wanted to, uh, what you guys just said. Oh, fuck. Um, forget it. 92%. There was an a- inaccuracy in that. He said 96% to Jesse later, 92% to Lydia, mm-hmm. and, Je- and and he said to Jesse it was the last batch you cooked. So, obviously, if it was there before he saw Lydia, he would have said 96%. But Jesse was escaping from his handcuffs the whole time, so there was no batch cooked between that moment and that moment. Only thing that's pissed me off, I think, ever in Brady Fast. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Todd's good at lying. He's a good manipulator. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it was about uh, 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 Jesse is what I was going to gonna say. Um, I'm sorry. Forget it. Carry on. So Walt in the cabin. Huh? Go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, all right. Walt. In my, oh my God! First of all, I just want to say I love the change of scenery. I love that they set it in the winter in where was that again? That was was that Maryland or uh, New Hampshire? Yeah. New Hampshire. That's right, New Hampshire. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, New Hampshire. No, yeah, set in New Hampshire, and. I just I, I, I just I love the setting of the cabin in the in the middle of the you know fro in, in the middle of the uh, winter forest and everything about it was just the, the setting. Uh, then Walt goes into the cabin. He introduces everyone. I'm I'm sorry. No. Uh, then the I'm screwing up right now. I got I'm I'm got a million things in my head. But he goes into the cabin, and then the guy you know walks him around. He's like, okay, man. Here's all your stuff. And Walt is distraught this whole time. He really is. Because he knows he has a limited amount of time, even you know, before the cancer takes him. You know, that medicine that he keeps getting is only going to get him so far. Yeah, if it does anything at all, it's like, I mean, at this point, it's like, who knows how bad the cancer is or anything. It's like, because well, we saw, it's like, I mean, that when he was dropped off there, he, 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 you know, he put on his little pork pie hat and tried to Heisenberg his way into town and barely made it to the freaking gate. Right. Yeah, no, like that scene was all about like 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 when uh when what's his face? The guy said, you know, this is a really good opportunity for you to, you know, take some time and, you know, think about think things over. But the whole time Walt's just falling apart because all he can focus on is, oh my God, my family, you know, they need this money. They're suffering right now without it. And yeah. and all he could think of was how can he get out of there? How can he get money to them? How can he change the situation drastically in a short amount of time. Right, right. And you in? Well, yeah. somebody go ahead. <laughs> oh, who's that? Who's that? He oh, should have oh. just held off. You know, Walt. And I, I, I think uh, that's obviously everybody's desperate. You know, um, he, he should have held off because, like, like, like what Saul said to him when he said, "Can I give you a bit of advice? Whatever, just, just, just hang low." Or uh, he is the. If he tries to get the money to his family, it's it's gonna it's gonna be taken away. It's gonna it's gonna cause something. He's got all this money. They're going through this trouble. Eventually, the trouble is gonna hopefully pass. So you know, like, just hold off a little bit. And, and everybody's acting out of desperation right now. Yeah, definitely, definite desperate situations all around at this point. Except I don't think it's gonna blow over because it's like a national news story. Right. However, 
Walter's is gonna make it a big national story. Like how they disrespect him on TV. Like what? You took my ideas and gray matter. Like okay, okay, fine, okay, okay. We can play it that way. Okay, I'll be back. Well, that's the greed and or or, or whatever you want to call that the the pride. And but greed. That's what I was gonna say before when I lost my thought. Um, when you guys are saying about about uh, um, them going after Jesse because they're greedy or whatnot. The, the reoccurring line in this movie is, we're going to make a lot of money together, you know? Uh, or in the show. <laughs> Plays uh-huh. like a movie. That It's been season through season, that line's been repeated. We're going to make a lot of money together. Um, right. So that's, where I, that's, and that's where it is right now. It just seems like a lot of uh, desperate people making their last moves. Obviously. Yeah. So it's going to be about revenge and mostly pride, too, because he's going to make a lot of noise when he gets back. Well, once he starts doing whatever he has to do back in the town, he's like, he's going to make a lot of noise to make sure it was him. Uh-huh. And, that was a, and, that, and that was a great transitioning shot. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, man. Uh, that was a great transitioning shot when uh, you see Walt, um, like the first shot, it cuts when he's up by the gate and he's, you know, he's about to leave, and then it cuts. You know, then I think the commercial break happened. But then the next scene, he's standing in the same exact position with the same coat on, and but and you didn't even really notice the the full beard on the side. Like I didn't notice it when I first. Watched I did. It. I did. I, I I I didn't. I'll admit I didn't catch that when I first watched it. Um, but then like how he just like walks in the cabin and pulls the hat off and he has the full head of hair. I was, I thought that was great. Uh huh. So just like that, we've transitioned quite a few months into the future. Exactly, and they right. don't even give you a, like like a month later or whatever. It's just boom, there you go. Really, it's it's definitely too. there's only been one chemo treatment, so it could be like two to three months later because he did say, uh, "I won't do what I did to you on the last attempt." But I don't know. It made it sound like there was only one attempt before this. To make yeah, it. exactly. So yeah. somewhat is like, oh, we'll call it about two, three months. That's what I'm saying. Around there, give or take. Yeah. I mean, because Breaking Bad is like it, it. Breaking Bad is a show that very rarely gives you time cues. Yeah, or give you time skips that much. I was like, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll oh, do time no. skips. They just won't tell you <laughs> how right. long. Skyler's based upon Skyler and the family. Their life seems to have progressed a great deal. So maybe he, maybe it's been going on for months, and he's only now getting chemo um, for two months. So right. that's actually, I'm not sure. Think about Skyler. She, she's in a whole new job. They, they took the house. I mean, all of that's got the house has been vandalized actually. So that, that could, you know, it's become a tourist attraction. So the bank had to put up the fence around it. So actually, maybe like six or more months, I might say. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, we could say safely twelve, if not if not twelve, is like closer to no, twelve. No, no, we're, we're we're not at twelve yet. It's like we know it happens at twelve. <laughs> yeah, we've seen yeah. the flash forwards at the beginning of the season last year. It's like well, we know what happens at twelve, so we, we are not there yet. But I would say we are definitely on the cusp of it, if nothing else. <laughs> Same things are definitely and, and, and we learn so many things. Like I mean, because obviously the the isolation of, of being in his cabin all, all on his own has, has been very very rough on Walt. Because we, we see him ask, uh, I think the character's name is Ed. It's like just take just stay over, you know, for a couple of hours. I'll give you ten thousand dollars. Just yeah, just exactly. And you just heard how broken he was in his voice in that scene. I mean, that was just. Cabin fever, that was just you. brilliant. Uh, I I really loved that scene personally. I, uh, it just showed like how desperate he was for some human interaction. You know? Anything really. Yeah. yeah anything. anything, any company he could have at that moment, he was gonna take no matter what. And you don't care if it's a snowman. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure human interaction would kind of not not mean a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You know what I say. I, I don't really need to know this much about your sexual life, okay? So we, do, we can just keep hey. it. Snow women are great. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> but just so desperate for for some sort of uh, for for just some sort of interaction, just someone there to talk to. This is a man we see broken. He 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 is at he is at the end of his rope. He is lost. Absolutely 
everything. It's like, I mean, he finds out, uh, you know, Skyler's going under her maiden name right now. Uh, there's financial troubles. There's, uh, the, uh, of course, the DEA is still coming after her because they would really, really like to arrest Walt. Right. And it's like, and, and, and that's all the interaction he has, just getting these, these random feedbacks from Ed. It's just kind of random happenings of 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 what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Also, um, one, one thing I'd like to say really quickly. I'm surprised the whole um, that news clipping of Andrea's death was not um, noticed by Walter or in the news lately. Like, hmm, wouldn't her death be like some of like, not like importance, importance, but somewhat like, like you know, something to be noticeable about. Oh, she died. Oh, okay, I should really notice that. It but would I'm probably be noticeable in Albuquerque, uh, probably less so where Walt is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I'm here in Reno. Surprisingly enough, I don't hear about every murder that happens in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. This is, some, per- some person gets popped. It's like, uh, that's not exactly national news when it happens all the damn time. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, I probably didn't make the news news wire in, in uh, New Hampshire, so that it's really not a surprise that 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 information not being related to Walt. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now it's like, oh, we're actually getting through this a lot faster than I th- than I thought we would. It's like we're we're just about done with this episode. It's like there's only really one major scene left. And yeah, the bar scene. My God, what a scene! <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So if like finally Walt, Walt decides to do something and, and break out a situation and try to get some money to his family, so he goes down there and pays someone at the bar to to fake call his son at school under the guise of being of being uh, Marie, and you can see he's he's pouring his heart out. To, to Walt Jr. or Flynn, as he seems to like to be called now, understandable. Yeah, yeah I won't blame him. Basically, all that was responded with "fuck you, Dad." Why don't you give me pancakes anymore? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, Pretty um, sure the reaction was <laughs> slightly right. more severe than pancakes. <laughs> well, yeah, no. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny you say that, Johan. That's what my title on the bottom is. I forgot about the pancakes because um, <laughs> Flynn had uh, performed. That seems so well that I forgot about the pancakes. First yeah, episode, did I job. didn't think about him and breakfast, and I was just everything about this episode was, was captivating. For hours afterwards, I, I right. couldn't stop seeing the face of Walter White. Not, but I was running a no seat. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. And it really like seeing him like pretty much just own his own father. I mean, he has every right to, anyways. Like. You kind of lied to him and kind of almost hit his mother. Like, again, that really hurt me the most. Like, yeah, not wow. to mention the fact that he killed his uncle. Right. Well, yeah, uncle. but, you know, Dead. he didn't at any point say, I didn't do it, other people did it. But, you, you know, he didn't at least try to play that angle at all. And I don't know. Yeah, would that, that make a difference? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe. Not a chance. Come on, no, man. man. It's like, no, 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 I didn't kill your uncle, but. I did put him in a situation where he would be killed, and I may not have killed him, but I did kill lots of other people, but I didn't personally kill him. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't me, it was my people. Nazi friend. <laughs> you have yeah. Nazi friends, yeah. too, It was man. my Nazi friend, you know, I was like, well, I, I figured I could use him, because, you know, I, I used my Nazi friend to kill nine other people in prison that could testify against me in a two-minute time span. Yeah, but, but, but I didn't personally do that either. I mean, I just had it done. Who would have thought Walt would have band together with some anti-Semites? Right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, yeah, that that ending, that bar. I mean, I like, and then right at you knew, like in that scene, like Walt was just broken after, yeah, like after Walt Jr. hung up on him. Yeah, yeah, he was, and then, he was, yeah, he he was, was just, even like, more uh, crazy. Yeah, exactly, and, he, and immediately he calls. The DA His next call pissed right me after. off. That pissed me off. Really? Really? I mean, he like called that. Call. You liked that call, the second call? Yeah, I did. Oh, I thought yes. that... What? Oh, come on. That was great. And then he goes and sits down, and then he sees... Uh, Wait a what's... Second, and, let's, and, let's go back just just, just a bit here. Right. Like, like, we have to talk about why this happened here. It's like, we know what happened, but it's like, at, at this point, Walt has figured out that he has lost everything. It's like, I mean, he, he thought at the end of the day he, he would still at least be able to find a way to have his family. But after talking to his son at this point, he realizes that everything he's done 
It's like, and you can see him just, just, just struggling on the phone when he, when he was talking to Flynn, saying, "All of this can't be for nothing." Damn near in tears. No, he actually, no, not damn near. He was in tears, right. saying that this can't all be for nothing. It's like he was doing all this for his family, and he has completely lost them. So after the point when Flynn um, hung up on him, and he realized he lost even that, it, we, we saw a man ready to give up, completely give up. It's right. like. Call the DA. He's like, "Look, I'm here. Just tired. Fucking come get me. Fuck it. Right. I'm gonna sit yeah, down and have actually, this drink. Fuck it. I will wait. This is Walter White. Just drop the phone. All right. I'm just gonna sit here and have a drink. Fuck it. See, but maybe right. I'm an asshole. Maybe I'm an asshole. Because... Oh, you're definitely an asshole. I mean, there's no. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a relevant time. That's, that's a relevant time. Off. My. Because what I would have done is, at that point, I would have kidnapped my fucking family, and then I would have brought them to another country uh, and dropped them into a mansion and gave them hundreds of million, or you know, gave them eleven million dollars and said, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a lot of money. Have a life. Have a life, or go live in the shit that I caused that I meant to do good, and I try to explain it as best as possible using my science, bitch. And you know. Uh, yeah, bitch. Give it another shot. I just, I just, I just hate, I just hated to quit then and there. I just felt there was any other shot you could take. I don't think there was another shot there. I, I hear you on that. I, you, you do make sense because I didn't really see it. I did again. That's why I say it. maybe I'm the asshole because I didn't even see that. I didn't even consider that being his final option until you just said it. Like end of the road. Right. Yeah, but he, he just. But then, you know, he sits down at the bar, orders orders a drink. The last and, drink. Uh, the bartender, orders it neat. Yeah, orders it neat. And then the, the bartender starts flipping around channels on the TV. And what does he come across? Uh, what I forget the you gotta forgive me. I forget the name of them. The, the gray, woman, matter. gray matter. Gray matter. No, gray matter, matter. But I forget the name of the man and the woman that from like oh. the first season. The, yeah, 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 the ones that were on it. it, it irrelevant. Yeah, no. Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Irrelevant. Gray Matter. Who cares? Yeah, yeah Mr. and Mrs. Is irrelevant. Yeah, he sees Gray Matter on the TV. Elliot and Gretchen, if you really want to know. And that's it. Yes, cares. thank you. I know. I knew. The, I I remember the girl's name was an odd or odd name. Not odd name, but you know. What are you saying to all the Gretchens? Not a common name. What? Well, what are you saying I to say, all the Gretchens in the world? I say there needs if, to be if, more Gretchens. If there's any Gretchens watching, I'm Johan saying there needs to be more Gretchens in the world. Geeks are around is not support the views of Johan Phillips. Johan Phillips. Hey, hey, I have yeah, nothing yeah, against the name Gretchen. All right, Gretchens. get off Gretchens my fucking awesome. case. <laughs> yeah, it's, not a, it's, not, it's not a normal name like Skylar or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know well, what happened in normal names like Johan? You know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Throw a rock and you'll hit four Johans. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> But anyway, getting back to your point, it's like, yeah, he's, he sees them on TV and has the bartender go back. And, and, and he's listening to them. It's like, and, and I think what really sealed it for him was um, was what Gretchen said when, when that, she was asked, well, like, have you seen the, is, is Walter White still alive? And she says emphatically, no. It's dead. like, oh, the Walter White I knew is dead. It's like, I don't know about this Heisenberg, you know, whatever, but the Walter White that I knew is dead. <laughs> He's irrelevant. He doesn't have nothing to do with the project. Exactly, but that exactly that goes along with what we've been saying. Is is Heisenberg his new adopted personality? He has no choice, really. But I mean, that hurt. That hurt him a lot. But the the real, I think the real spear in the heart was when they said all all of his involvement was just in the creation of the name. Black plus white is gray plus whatever, or whatever, whatever. I said something stupid. We need... Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. Fuck him. He didn't that know. right there something is what, him. when as soon as they said that, that was what, when, when I, I don't even know now going in where he, well, is his motivation for, what is he doing for his family? It looks like revenge. That's what I said in the oh, beginning. Yeah, now it's, he, it's, pride it's, and it's revenge. Your revenge. He's because like, you're right, like bitch. Big... Heisenberg is only here. Yeah, because like exactly. at, at this point, there, there was exactly one play he could make because uh, the the one important thing he learned from that conversation that he didn't know is that the blue meth is back in circulation, and he knows he's not making it. There is only one yes. other human being on the planet that can right. make that blue meth. And, exactly. And, and, and now he and and now he knows, and he he must have figured out at this point 
that right. it's got to be Jack, Jack responsible. Clever, because, and then cause, he's cause... got Jesse. He's figured that out. So maybe it's not <laughs> selfish revenge. Maybe maybe he dropped it saying, I've got something to do. I've got to save Jesse. Yeah, it's, it's the only thing or left that he can do. Is, is like, I, I, I think he's at a point now that is the only thing he has left. He's lost, he's lost his family. He's lost his money, although it's like going after Jack, he definitely plans on getting that back as well. But he, you, he's got nothing else. He's got nothing else to live for. At this point, right? I, I I don't see it going in that direction. I think he's gonna try to kill Jesse along with Jack and Todd and all of them. I I really don't. I well, think I he think still it. hates Jesse to the I core. Don't know. Well, I still think Jesse's gonna die. Sorry, go ahead. By by his oh, own yeah. body. But I know I think he's gonna die from the Nazis. And then, oh yeah. But forget that. Go ahead. I sorry, interrupted you. Idea. No, oh, yeah, I, I I I don't. Oh. But uh, but yeah, no, I think I think that uh, he still wants Jesse dead. I think he's pretty I mean, dead. I think he's I think pretty set on that. If he uh, rejects Todd in the next episode, then Jesse will die. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they have no need for him anymore. Yeah, I don't think he really cares at this point. I think he just wants to get the money to his family and or kill Jack. Know. Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah, or just get the blue. Jack. Yeah. Or or just get the blue meth off of the market I think, entirely. No, I don't. I think the money to the family is irrelevant. I think, I think because uh, it's that's what was proved with this phone call with uh, Flynn, money. and uh, it's he's he's going to kill. So yeah. to show them his little friend. Yeah, he he wants Jack dead. He, so he has it's like I mean there there's no if and buts or maybe it's like I I agree with Todd that I don't think. At this point, it's purely about the money anymore. It's like revenge is the deciding factor here. It's right. like, I mean, come hell or high water, it's like, remember, it's like, well, Walt honestly was doing this for his family, and Jack killed Hank right in front of him. Right. If you think about there it. There is no the... way that there, that Walt's not going to respond to that. Excuse me, excuse me. Not Walt. I, I actually agree with what Gretchen said. Walt's gone. There is no Walt anymore. This is Heisenberg. <laughs> right. And I think. Um... In a small note, that I think Jack kind of started a downfall on Walter's, you know, business or pretty much. I mean, Hank was there too, but in all honesty, Hank was not had not had that much. But when um Jack came in, when he killed Hank and everything else went out, spiraling out of control, you know, Jig was up. Jig was pretty much up. The neo Nazis pretty much screwed everything up. They took the money, they killed Hank, and pretty much left his ass to ruins. But again, it all comes from a phone call placed by Walt. You know, correct. Everything exactly. you trace back can can be traced at back to a phone call made by Walt. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Mhm. He doesn't. Really th- he's a very smart man, but he can't, he doesn't think of the outcome or the, the actions he causes towards people. Like, dude, do you ever think about it? No, I just do them. Uh, that's right. why everyone's. No, I, I I think he does think about it, but he he kind of counts on his ability to control situations that can't actually be controlled. All right. So it's not that he's not thinking about it; it's that he's thinking wrongly about it. It's like I mean, when it comes to the, to the science, he's great at it. He he knows the science very well. Bitch. The the criminal <laughs> element he understands a little bit less. <laughs> Right, he's not Gus. He's not Gus Fring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's not Gus. He's very much not Stop. Gus. No. Yeah. I mean, if he had the same thing, if he had the same thinking process as um Gus, he might have gone away with it. But well, well, again, he didn't grow up half his life dealing dealing with criminals. You know. Right. Right. I mean, we still don't know what Gus was. You know, beforehand, he came from some ominous or mysterious <laughs> background of of of, of fear. Uh-huh. Yeah, I miss him. Yeah, well, well, Gus was a hell of a character. But, uh, like, we'll be talking about Gus Fring for years. I loved to watch him go, though. That was one of the best exits yeah. of any character in television. Yeah, like he, he went out like a boss. You got to give him that. Yes, yeah, that, that was great. Half his face blown off and still had time to adjust his motherfucking face. Yeah. He was still cool. Like, <laughs> hey, he he walks out of that room, you're like, what the fuck? And then... Dude, this is why we're going to need an aftermath party. We're going to need like a Breaking Bad session where we all sit down after it's all over and we're going to need to hash it out because we're all going to have some trauma and we're going to need to discuss it and support one another. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe, I'm going to need a good couple of, month, couple of months of intense therapy after this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a thing where we just talk about, you know, all... I mean, 
I'm just gonna be like, what do I do with my life? What am I gonna? Thing. I'm just gonna be like, what do I do with my life now on Sunday night? What am I gonna do? I mean, I just, I, I don't know what to do. That's <laughs> actually a good money making opportunity, being a therapist for people <laughs> who can't deal with the loss of their favorite TV shows. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I gotta from... tell you, it's gonna be hard to find a show to replace this one. They got some big yeah. fucking shoes to fill. Kenny yeah. Powers comes back on the night Walter White leaves. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It'll be my birthday. Well, Kenny homeless, fucking uh, Powers. Well, there's homo <laughs> news, Hannibal, so I'm good for that. So I got some shows to fill out the Breaking Bad a little bit, but not that much. Yeah, but of course, let's just get to the tail end of the episode or a kick before we get on too much of a tangent. It's like uh, after Walt has seen uh, his his former Grey Matter cohorts on TV talking, it's like we, he's made another decision, and now I think we're finally getting into where we where we've seen the flash forwards go all all of this time. Where I, we are finally getting into that. As the police show up to arrest Walt, of course he isn't there. And, an- and another special thing is, like, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the first time that the entire Breaking Bad theme has been used on an episode, because C- that was the f- that was the full thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like everyone's yeah. thinking, it's like, oh, that's I a special that. version of the thing. It's not a special no. version. If you have the soundtrack, cool which I do, that is the full <laughs> version of it. <laughs> it was so Soundtr- cool. It was playing. Soundtrack is that good, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, the soundtrack is great. Don't get me wrong. I, lo- I love the score of the show. It- it- it's phenomenal. It complements it perfectly. Is it? Uh, because I-, I enjoy listening to the scores when I write and uh, because no, li- no no words. A lot of stuff with no words. Are you talking soundtrack? Soundtrack no or score? score? Score. No words. Soundtrack. No, I'm gonna ha- if you guys recommend it, I'm going to have to pick it up. Because <laughs> I can only imagine it being decent. Oh yeah, it, it, it's a great score. It's like yeah, like, yeah, a lot of times when I'm here doing work, it's like I'll have that playing somewhere. <laughs> the background good stuff. Right on. But yeah, so okay, and we got one episode left <sighs> before we say goodbye to Breaking Bad forever. Any uh, any wild speculation? The oh, final yes. wild speculations. Mm. Uh, I'm I sticking have, with I my original one. wild speculation. Is like I said it last week, and I'm saying it again this week. Jose. Walt, wait a second. Wait, hold on. Like I'm a, sorry. Yes, go no, ahead. No, no, Walt kills Jack. Uh, Jesse, Jesse kills Todd. Jesse kills Walt. That is the beginning, middle, and end of my Walt speculation. Mm. Uh, I, I, the way I would like to see it end is Walt goes in, kills Jack, Jesse, Todd, all of them, you know, gets his money back, gets back w- t- together with his family somehow. You know, gives his money to his family, so you know somehow they all for, he, they all forgive him and everything, and it just ends with him dying in a hospital bed with his family bus beside him. You know, mm. and a rainbow I, out the window, right? Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, and a, rain, and yeah, a rainbow. Yeah, sure. No, but I I just think that would be the the I think that would be the perfect ending. I think that yes, Walt dies, but not from getting killed by other means except for what started all of this. What started all of this ends it. The cancer. Interesting. Okay. I still stick with what I said uh, last week um, I, I, that Jesse is going to get killed in by the Nazis then the Nazis are going to go and get um, Walt's family and Walt is going to go and kill them for his family, but I have no clue how. It, I have no real speculations if he's going to live or die. I haven't thought that far. I'm letting I'm letting the show do it for me. Mm. Only thing I got is Walter well, Heisenberg. Really, he's just going to raise a lot of hell. Pretty much to say, I was here. My name is Walter White. I create gray matter. I make the blue meth, and I'm going like a boss. I'm going to say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Basically. Oh, uh, yeah, he goes out total Scarface style. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take all you with me. How about you, Knuckles? What do you think? I don't have any wild speculation, but I am going to say, and I could be wrong about this, but I am i don't think they're going to have enough time for it in this last episode. I'm a little bit disappointed that we're not getting any kind of closure with uh, Madrigal or... Uh, the background that was alluded to with Gus Fring, with uh, the people, like where he came from, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that we that we didn't get any closure with those things. 
Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, was like, I, I thought we'd see a lot more of Magical this season. Right. How about uh, that for some spinoffs? Those would be two great spinoffs right there. The prequel to Gus and oh, yeah. Magical. Like, just that uh, all I know at this point... Yeah. Oh, All I know yeah. at this point is uh, next week. Uh, next week I, I will probably be crying on here. Just letting you guys know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a little girl. <laughs> but as usual, he will be pantless. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pantless <laughs> and crying. <laughs> Backing at the wind. <laughs> exactly. All right, then I guess we're gonna go ahead and um and, and wrap this one up. Uh, one more episode, gang. One more episode of Breaking Bad next week. And unfortunately for all of you viewers and all of you on the panel, I will not be here next week for that. It's like, and I feel really, really terrible about it. Uh, Breaking Bad is the reason that Geeks of the Round exists, and I won't be here to see it, see it through to its completion. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, watch my YouTube channel next week. You'll see why I wasn't able to be here, but I will have um, a video up before Geeks Around goes live next week with my thoughts on the finale and and everything before Geeks Around goes live. So you guys will, will absolutely see that. Also want to keep it locked to youtube.com slash geeks around for our future videos, for our future discussions. We're doing the Blacklist and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a little bit later on this week, tomorrow actually. Uh, and additionally, American Horror Story Coven and... What am I thinking? Ah, yes. The Walking Dead Season 4 are all due this year. You find all those and more at geeksoftheround.com. If you have anything for us, email us geeksoftheround at gmail.com. My name is Deanna Jackson, and we'll be back next week for the finale.